Hi friends, welcome back to Beccarelli's Books. Today I'm uh, responding to a subscriber request for instructions on how to create the small fabric journal covers that I did for the 10 at a time. So um, what I used is file folder, just some recycled file folder. So um, I'll show you how to do the folds. So we open it out and the short side, see how one side is shorter than the other? Like that. So we just use the short side and we fold it into the center fold like that. And give it a crease. <clears throat> You can use a bone folder or your back of your scissor or your nail, whatever you want. And then we want to fold this over to get our other side measurement. And then we fold this over that fold. So this side's going to be bigger, which is going to <coughs> create a bit of an overlap, which we want for strength. I am going to use my bone folder. Alright. And then we want to glue them down. I'm just going to use fabric glue because it dries quickly. And I'm going to glue the whole lot down. And you could make a really long journal or two small ones or just cut it down to the size that you want. Fold that in. We should have done the other side first but it doesn't really matter. These are a great really quick little journal to create without very much <clears throat> supplies. Alright, so we folded those down nice and secure. And then we want to fold this whole thing in half. So there is a fold line, so it should be quite easy to fold. There you go. And under there, there's about half an inch of overlap underneath. So that's your cover. And then you can choose your length, whatever length you like. But if you want to cut it in half, you can. Or you can make it any size you want. So this one I think <clears throat> so I actually just have um, chosen some fabric, so I don't want to make it any bigger than the fabric that I've got. So I might just make it, so what is that? It's nearly four and a half inches, so let's go seven. Or you could do half, which is about six and a quarter. And I'm just going to cut this one with scissors, but you could use your um, trim, your paper trimmer, or a a knife and your ruler. <clears throat> and then you could use this one as a mini journal. And I'm just going to show you with this bigger one. All right. So things I learned in my last one is I wish that I had have rounded the corners. I think that would have given it a nicer look. And this one's for Leanne. Guess what, Leanne? I bought a new corner rounder. <laughs> oh, thank God, she says. Over that. Weren't we all over that corner rounder? God. <clears throat> oh, no. Don't tell me. Three punches and it's broken. No, not really. Mm. 
there we go all right so I've rounded the corners because I just wish that I had have done that on the last one <clears throat> so to do the cover I've chosen this blue fabric <clears throat> now the fabric that you want you want it to be like a uh, a woven fabric that will fray so that you can fray your edges you don't really want anything with um, like a design stitched into it because it won't fray very nicely and you don't want to knit because that won't fray okay how much do we want it will actually fit in there so you don't want too much overlapping because that's all going to be frayed. So I'm just going to cut here. <clears throat> and I'm going to tear it. Also going to cut this side bit off because it's um, it's like got a hemmed piece at the side that we do not want. And just double check. I've made it a bit big, but that's all right. We can trim it. So I need to trim this down a smidge because otherwise it's going to be too big and you lose the, if you glue it on and then need to cut it down, you lose your fray or your frayed bits. here so you want to make it just a little tiny bit bigger than your page your piece of pa your card just a tiny smidge unless you want really long frays around the outside which you know that could look cool too <clears throat> all right oh which side do we want do we want the very uh, intricate design or do we want the back side which is more of a wash that might be cool what do you reckon it's got lots of fluff on it I think I, li I like that back side better yeah I'm going to use that okay <clears throat> so we also want to cut an inside piece and we want to make this one just the same, pretty much. And this is like a pretty hardy cotton that will fray quite nicely as well. <clears throat> Alrighty. So the outside piece, we're going to glue this on, and because I won't be sewing this yet, um, I'm just taking it to this point, so I'm just going to glue it down pretty well, but if you are going to sew this straight away, you just want to um, put your glue in the middle. Um, so that you don't clog up your sewing machine. Get it nice and stuck in the spine too. Go all the way to the edges if you're not sewing it. I am going to sew it but just not right now. So I can sti stick it all the way down right to the edge. All right. And then we want to stick our fabric, whatever side you choose. And I'm sticking the wrong side out because I want to. 
and we just want to put that on with the small amount hanging over the edge. And you should be able to pull it tight without tight, but you don't want to warp your card. <clears throat> Alright, that's pretty good. We've got a nice amount on around the outside for fraying. And it's nice and snug. Alright. And then we want to flip it over and do the inside <clears throat> shouldn't have turned my glue up I've been I've had it sitting um, upside down I had it sitting upside down so that it would run out properly and I I just turned it the wrong way up It's working now. Okay. Alrighty. <clears throat> and then we'll grab our other piece and we'll stick that, make it as even with the other piece of fabric as you can and make sure to cover your card if you don't want any of that showing Just smooth it all out So it is stringy, it's going to be stringy because we want it to fray. <clears throat> Alright, so the next step, if you're going to sew it, and I recommend that you do, because once you start fraying it, it'll continue to fray, and then you'll be left with strings and a piece of file folder and not much else all right so what we'll do when we get to it and it won't be right this moment well for maybe maybe it'll be right this moment for you we'll see what happens um, we're going to take it to the sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch all the way around as close to the edge of the um, cardstock as possible without going too far over do a, a zigzag stitch or a straight stitch whatever you like it'll just stop the fraying from coming in and getting all of this fabric it'll just allow you to fray all of these parts and then once you've done that you'll be able to fray your edges and decorate and you can put a, a little signature in here um, because I did this a little bit differently and, and I reinforced the spine, um, I didn't need to add a reinforcing tape, which I did to the last ones. Um, this one was a little bit different. Uh, I think this is a better design. Um, and that's what happens, isn't it? We learn as we go. So I hope this is what you needed to know and thank you so much for asking. I really appreciate that, Sandy. Um, and yeah, I'll, I might do a, um, a next part and show you the stitching part and then we'll finish this journal off on here later as well. Um, yeah, but there you go. There's the basic how-to of those fabric covers. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Bye.